welcome back to another episode of Building Skimmer down at the beach. It's a bit windy. Let's head into the garage where I'm making the hatches for the starboard hull. Cockpit hatch combings and the hatch frames are all completed for the starboard hull. You can see I, I marked them so I made sure oh, I didn't glue up the wrong pieces. So forward hatch, forward uh, part of the frame, forward hatch, right part of the frame, forward hatch, back part of the frame. For the forward, middle and aft hatch, they're all, all the combings are done and the frames are done. And I use these three millimeter spacers to space the hatch out without making it too loose. And it's actually come out really, really well. So it's the three mil gap there, three mil gap here. Here's another one in there. Three mil front and back. And that's the frames done. And I've Started off on tape, and I I cut a bit extra to allow uh, on this side because it's a bit more curved on the after hatch because it's a bit more curved to the boat. So I've cut extra, and when I glue it on, I'll have to clamp it to spread it out another three millimeters. I started mid, started forward hatch. For some reason the colour looks a little washed out on the screen. Maybe it's the, uh, the artificial lights up here mixing with the natural light. But anyway, there is the, um, the hatches in position. Obviously they're just dry fitted. The sole of the cockpit to the upper edge of the hull side, it's about 26 centimetres. It's about 24 centimetres to the top of the hatch, so another two centimetres down to the sole itself. So looking at relative cockpit sole to waterline positions, you can see there the waterline at 350 kilos, the design waterline is 20 centimetres, and that's 20 centimetres from here to the bottom of the mask intake. And the cockpit sole is 26 centimetres from here to here to that line there. So you can see this is my freeboard when I put in my self-draining holes for the cockpit, which I'm going to do. There's the, um, the bulwarks here, and then there'll be a drain hole cut out in here. So a little half circle cut in the bottom of that, and then a, a drain hole here. And the same in this position here, and another... Another support frame in this position and then the same drain hole there and then a drain hole in each back. So any water that comes in, it's got scuppers in one, two, three, four, five, six, and each scupper will be probably about a 30 centimeter, sorry, 30 millimeters in diameter hole and probably a bit a long, long ways as well. So.
six mil plywood is glued to the hatch uh, frames now, which is great. But because it is only six mil ply, there is a little bit of a little bit of give. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, I'll be using some 40 by 8 millimeter timbers, uh, probably at least uh, three or maybe four underneath each hatch going this way, which will then take the load of people being able to stand on it. Ideally, I'd want to make it strong enough so that if two people accidentally stand on it at the same time, it'll, um, it will stand up to it. But they fit really well, as you can see. I'm very happy with how they've turned out and actually looking down the length of the boat they look really nice as well all right so i'm getting under the boat so i can use my pencil to then mark out the position on the inside where the hatch combing sits on the underside so i can put those support timbers so laying under here's a couple of stalactites stalactites hanging under there but it'll be okay This is obviously the starboard forward hatch. All right. So there's the line and these are the support timbers. So, a bit short, but that's the thickness I'll be using. That kind of thing, obviously, that one needs to be cut down. But, so one in the middle, probably, I think. What do you reckon? Is it three enough? Obviously, they're going to be longer and come right into that line there and across to the other side. And then I'm going with four. I think that's going to be the best. And in terms of weight, one extra one isn't going to make a huge difference. A couple of days later, the glue has set on the supports underneath um, the hatches. But I did a test and uh, I put my weight on it and... They, the glue didn't fail, but as you can see here, these did. Although these supports can take the weight, the, the load isn't distributed across a, a wider surface on the underside, and then so it's cracked. So last night I laminated another layer of um, five mil marine ply on top of the hatch. It weighs a bit more now, but I'm gonna do a test to see um, how it goes standing. I'm gonna use the same test they did for the other one. So putting the weight on the rails, not on the actual supports underneath. <laughs> Here you go. Oh yeah, that's not solid. So I'm gonna do that same glue up on the other two hatches. That's the, the forward hatch and the starboard hole. I'll do the mid hatch and the aft hatch, but I'll leave the underneath supports there as well. Um, yeah, and that's just with unthickened epoxy. That 200 mils of unthickened epoxy spread nice and even uh, with a notched Spreader? Yeah, the notch spreader is still stuck to the plastic. There we go. Good thing I've got a CNC machine to cut as many of these as I need. Okay, guys, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Really do appreciate all the support behind this project. I can't wait to get it on the water and go sailing, so I'm trying to forge ahead as fast as I can whilst making these videos at the same time. If you have any questions, please shoot through a comment. Love to read them, and I love commenting back. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and uh, liking the videos. It really help getting more people to see them. 
Um, but in the next video, we'll be coating the insides of the hulls and starting to cut the, the bottom panels and then gluing them on. So I'll see you there.